Welcome back, sixth grade scholars. Thank you for joining me again for another session of Math at Terry's House. Well, as you can see, we're going to continue with positive rational numbers, but today we're going to be ordering them. First, here's your solution from our last session. Please take a moment to check your answers and determine if they are correct. If you've made an error, it's okay. Just go back and see if you can find where you have made your mistake. Pause the video while you look at your solutions. Our objective of the day, I will be able to order no more than four positive rational numbers expressed as fractions, proper or improper, mixed numbers, decimals and percents. Our decimals can be through thousands, fractions with denominators of 12 or less, or factors of 100. You will need, as always, your notebook and something to write with, preferably a pencil. So let's go ahead and get started. Some key vocabulary that you wanna write down in your notebook today is ascending and descending. Ascending is arranged from smallest to largest. It's increasing. Or descending is arranged from largest to smallest. It's decreasing. The pictorial in the slide gives us a really good, you know, um, illustration on how it looks. So if something is ascend ascending, up, oh, it's going up. If it's descending, it's coming down. So just kind of think about that when you quick notes that you might want to jot down in your notebook to write down. When ordering fractions, decimals, and percents, you want to convert all of your rational numbers to a common form. Whether they're all decimals, whether they're all percents, or whether they're all fractions is actually your choice. You're going to determine the given order. So whether we're talking about ascending or descending, and then we're going to place them back in order in the original form in which it was given. You might wanna take this time to review the notes from the previous sessions. Those are located in your learning plan. You know, the notes that give you step-by-step -step directions on how to convert fractions to decimals, fractions to percents, percents to fractions, percents to decimals, decimals to fractions, that it went on and on and on. So if you need to go back and review those notes, please do so. Yeah, this might be a little easy for you because we've been doing it for a few days. So, ascending order, this is what we're going to do just to make sure you remember how to place these in order. So let's go ahead and get started. So again, here's the um, here's our original problem here. I'm just gonna keep that up there while the explanation of what you're doing plays out for us, okay? Go ahead and make this a little louder. This practice problem say we're going to place all of our rational numbers in ascending order. Ascending means we're going to be going up. I'm just going to draw a picture just to remind me that I'm going up, so I'm going to start from my lowest level to my highest level, so smallest to largest. I'm also going to just put a blank number line, a blank line here, so I can put all of my common forms underneath the original forms. And I want to do that just so that I won't mistakenly, when I rewrite it, just communicate what my forms, my original forms are. So I'm going to start with one and three fifths. So I'm going to change one and three fifths, and I'm going to decide to change them to decimals because I can easily think of money at that point. So this is one and three fifths, and I'm going to change one and three fifths to an improper fraction. So of course, you know we did the. Um, the last few sessions we changed them to inventory <coughs> representation. I'm just going to do the math. So five times the one is five plus the three. So as an improper fraction, this is a fifth. Now I'm just going to do my basic long division. Set up one point. Bring this right up. And so that five goes into eight one time. I'm going to subtract. Down minus zero, I have 35 goes into 36 times, so gives me a remainder of zero. 
So I have one and six tenths each. So one and three fifths is the same as one and six tenths. I'm just gonna put it there. Then I'm gonna go to this one. Well, that's already a decimal form, so all I have to do is just bring it down. Then I have nine fifths. So now I'm gonna change nine fifths to a decimal. So I have nine fifths. Again, I'm just gonna do my basic math here. Denominator is not going to hit the door. It's an easy peasy way to think about it. Five goes into nine one time. I'm going to do my math. Zero, zero. Five goes into 40 eight times. Eight times five is 40. Subtract. Get zero. I don't need that additional zero, so I'm not going to worry about it. So this gives me one and eight tenths. Okay. So now we have one more problem. We have 13.5%. So I need to change 13.5% to a decimal. So I'm going to place it here, 13.5%. How do I change a percent to a decimal? Remember, changing a percent to a decimal means I'm going to go to the place value to the left. So I'm going to do this here. Here's my form. it and this is going to give me 135,000 so now I'm going to place that number here so now all we're going to do is place these numbers that we have in common form in order so you may say well it's all different as far as the place value. So we can fix that as well. So let's go ahead and fix it. So we have, let's place it here. Let's go to the line to keep something uniform. I have one and six tenths. And I'm trying to keep them in the box just to make it a little easier. One and 3,500. We have one and eight tenths. Then we have zero and one hundred thirty-five thousand. All these little extra spaces. We can just put zeros there, make sure they're all the same. That's just one of those lessons we learned in previous years. And then we can determine which ones are the same. But remember, we're going in ascending order, smallest alliance. Just by looking at this, we know which one is the smallest number. So right now, my smallest number, and then I can just rewrite it as my answer. So I'm going to put a nice little star here because here's going to be my answer. That is going to be my smallest number. Dollars. That in original form is 13.5%. So I'm going to put 13.5% here, my smallest number. Then what is my second number? I like to put a little check mark to say I've used it. Then I go here, all these are dollars. Now I'm thinking about some changes. It's easy just looking at your tens, your tens column and determining which one is the next smallest. Well, of course, it's the three. Then where does that fall in my original? So I'm just going to place this as one and thirty-five hundredths. Okay. Then I'm going to go to my next one for my check mark because I've used it. Which one is the third smallest? Six or the eight? You guessed it, six. So what is that in this original form though? One and three fifths. So I'm going to place here one and three fifths. Check mark. And it's only one more left, which is left. Um, there's one, nine fifths, so that's the only one that's going to be left. Nine fifths, which is about one and a tenth. So I'm going to place my last number here. So this is my answer. So again, you want to change it all to a decimal, or you could have changed them all to a percent. Change them all to fractions so does get a little bit tricky because then you have to change the fraction, and then you may have to change all of your fractions. I'm tired. Sometimes you're going to have to do all of that work in order to find your solution. This is one of those 
SOLs, and this is one of those objectives in which you really just need to know without a calculator. So again, it's going to be up to our advantage to do what? Solve. What is solve? Show all work. So we want to make sure we're doing that and modeling that throughout our, you know, time doing fractions, decimals, and percents. So we have our answer down there. So let's just go ahead and place our answers in the box. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put, um, place our answers in the box. And our answers are here, located here. So as you can see, in its original form, in ascending order. In its original form, in ascending order. Okay, a lot of work, but we have it correct. So now it's your turn. If you need to go back and look at how some of the um, answers were developed, please go ahead and do that. But you're going to place the following in descending order. So you're going to place the following in descending order. 5, 6, 80%, and 83 hundredths. So go ahead, pause the video, saw in your, in your notebook, and once you're done, let's see if we have the same answer. Welcome back. So let's see. Descending order, highest to lowest, greatest to least. Let's see if we have that in here. So five, six, and again, I made all the common, but I made them all decimals. And you're probably saying, why does she keep using decimals? Because it's one of those forms that's just, you know, kind of easy to go between from each of our representations. But I could have used all deaths, all fractions, or all percents. So for five, six, when I did all of the long division and I got all the math done, I get 83, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. It goes on forever as notated by our repeating bar. 80% as a decimal is 8 tenths or 80 hundredths. So again, just put it right directly underneath. And then 83 hundredths was already, already in decimal form. So you might say, well, these two are the same. Well, they're not the same. Why? These two are not the same because this goes on where this terminates. So this stops. This repeats. This terminates. Terminates just means it stops. It ends. And because this continues, this becomes my larger number. So my largest number is 5, 6 in its original form, 83 hundredths in its original form, and then 80% in its original form. Now, you might want to say, um, well, why can't I change them all to fractions? Well, you can. But remember, if you change them all to fractions and they're not easily, um, you, you know, you can't easily change them having the like denominators by looking at factors of 100, then you have to go through some additional steps. But you are more than welcome to because you are mathematic geniuses. So you can definitely do all fractions, again, all percents or all decimals. It is definitely your choice. So speaking of choice, your independent practice today, you're going to choose 50% of the problems to complete. You choose. But again, in your notebook, once you decide, you need to write it all out. Please go back through our previous sessions and all of the work we have done and checked to make sure you remember how to get to whatever form you're trying to get all of them common. All right? So your choice. Tomorrow, we will definitely go through the answers. And because I don't know what you choose, I have to do them all. Hmm. Doesn't seem fair, but for you, I will do it. Remember, your 10 to 15 minutes in Dreambox. In our next session, though we will be completing some of our work on rational numbers, ordering, comparing, and converting between fractions, decimals, and percent, we're going to do a problem of the week. So I will see you during our next session. Thank you, and you have a fabulous day.